So today I want to take a look at this Milwaukee Magnum hammer drill. It is the model number 5370-1. And as you can see, this is the receipt. I bought it on March 22nd, 1983. Milwaukee hammer drill. And I paid $169. Now before we take a look at my unit, I thought I'd, uh, I'd show a couple here from eBay. Here's a Milwaukee Magnum hammer drill, same one, nice condition, $59.99. Here we see another one for $98.99. And that thing is beat to hell. And you see that toolbox right here? I've got several of those. And uh, I'll show you, uh, I don't keep my hammer drill in there, but I have uh, several of those boxes from way back when. You can clearly see this is well used. $98.99. So just a couple there. Now the reason I wanted to show you those few that I did see on eBay is to compare that to what I have. I'm a damn picky person. I'm the only one that ever used my tools when I was doing carpentry for a living. And um, I just took care of my stuff. Now I will say I did wipe down this tool, okay, uh, before I did this video. But you're going to see that it's like a car. You can wipe down a car, sweep out the inside, but if it's beat to hell, you're not going to cover that up. So we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. Now I'm doing some rearranging of tools and I'm putting um, some of the boxes that they were in. I'm trying to standardize to the rigid tool boxes. So that's why when I got to set, I thought, well, geez, let's, uh, let's uh, showcase this on one of my YouTube videos. Now I was a bit curious to get some more information on this being so old. Uh, I had a few questions, and so I uh, called the Milwaukee Tech Support eight, at uh, 800-729-3878 on December 9th of 2022. Spoke to a very helpful and a very knowledgeable gentleman by the name of Roy. Now, I didn't say it, but this is a two-speed with reverse and a half-inch chuck. Now I knew, I, I took information off the nameplate, serial number, and then there was another number, and um, when I did a little research on my own, I found out that the newer stuff has 13 digit serial numbers, <clears throat> whereas mine was only, <coughs> was only 10 digits, and I could not find anything out, hence the reason to call Milwaukee themselves. Now, Roy told me that the most important digits, I read off all the numbers, but he said the most important digits were the last four, and in my case, they are number 3463. Three. That's the last four of my 10-digit serial number. And then he went on further to explain that he was able to tell me some information on that, but to go further for the year, he said, I need the date code. And I had another set of uh, information that I found that was just above the serial number on my tag. And that read AJIC. Now, boys and girls, this is the information that I was given by Roy uh, with those two sets of numbers, those two, that two sets of um, information given him. Okay, this is very cool. My drill was manufactured in November of 1982, and it was built in Mississippi. Now, that was way cool, built in Mississippi. Also, it was in the second production run of this model. And uh, Roy also stated that no parts are available as the unit is too old. Now, I did look up some other places, 
And when I put in the full 10 digit number, I did see that there was something available. I'd have to dig if I needed it. I don't need anything. This works fine. But uh, so there may or may not be. Maybe not from Milwaukee per se, but maybe other places have old stock. And then uh, I did ask Roy about the removable power cord. He says that there are very few models today that have a removable power cord. And he said the reason for that was when you, uh, for storage. And I never took mine apart. I left it. But I could see where, because I made a custom box for it. But I could see where that would be very helpful. But that, that was the reason he said that. So let's look a little deeper on that date code. Mine is uh, AJIC. The A, he said, was the plant, which I'm assuming when he said Mississippi which would be the plant in Mississippi. J is the month, which in my case was November. I and C is the year, which again in my case is 1982. Now here you're looking at the end of the cord that is removable. And you see that flat spot here? So this is um, polarized. There's a flat spot up here so you can only put this on one way now if we take a look at the condition of this cord the only issue and it's just in this reinforcement here it hasn't gone into the cord is it's cracked but the integrity of the actual cord the jacket on the um, is fine it's just this uh, just this restraint relief. So, if we line everything up correctly, that would go in here. Well, I'm doing this behind my camera, so it's kind of hard to do. So, let's try this again here. Yeah, there it is. So, basically, that would go in there like that. Okay, I didn't have that. That's why it wasn't going in. I didn't have this twisted quite, quite right. This, this sleeve has to be rotated properly too to go in. So you simply put it in there like that, push in and rotate. Now it's locked. Rotate it and pull it out. All right, so let's take a look at this. As I said, I did wipe this down just to kind of clean it up a little bit, but this is the condition of it. say pretty damn good here we have I, I really like the switches that they had nice and long get in there like that this is your forward and reverse switch this is your two speed high and low your half inch chuck and this is the original chuck still works great because I used to use this a lot uh, when I was doing decks, drilling holes for anchors and stuff, mainly uh, in heavy duty drilling. Uh, when I would uh, do doors, hanging doors and drilling the holes for the lock set. Uh, and when I talk about hanging doors, I mean not pre-hung units, actually making my own jams, door jam, and hanging the door to the jam. And then here you have the collar to lock and unlock your hammer drill. So if you want the hammer right now, this is in the regular drill configuration. Okay, so if you want the hammer drill, you pull down and turn. So with that up, you're now in the hammer drill configuration. To go into standard drilling, pull down until it's like that. Regular drilling, hammer drilling. Now here's the handle that I've never used. I just am not a big fan of these, never had need to use it. But this would go over the front of the drill. Then you would turn it till it the friction till it would clamp around it. 
And then this is for a, for a stop. So if you're, say, drilling in concrete, you want to go to a depth. Now what I always did is I always just put duct tape or masking tape on the drill uh, to go to the depth because it was never very, very critical. I mean, you wanted to go to a certain depth, but it wasn't like I was doing any hardcore, you know, machining to where you had a very tight critical dimension. So, but I thought I would show this. Now you're asking, does it work? Well, still, uh, of course it does. So right now we're in the low range on this side. If you flip it the other side, it's the high range. We're go, uh, we're going to go forward. We'll flip the switch to reverse. Let's go back to forward. And let's change it to the high range. Now sometimes if it doesn't go, now this time it went. If it didn't go, you would just rock this back and forth while pushing this into whatever range you're going into so that the gear is lined up. So now we're going to be in the high range and we're going to be going forward. And then now reverse.